Good morning, this is Pastor Phil again. It's Friday already. It's another Friday has come our way and it's time for me to share just a few thoughts with you as we enter our weekend. I want to, first of all, before we get into the thoughts today, uh, let you know we will be online again this Sunday. One more Sunday. We're hoping that uh, by next Sunday, uh, first Sunday of September, we're back in the house and for two services, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. But this Sunday, 11 a.m. online, that's the only service we're offering. Also, we got some exciting things that we're praying about. We're looking at doing a tent gathering uh, here at the church, so it would be outside. Uh, so just a lot of good things that we've got coming down the pipe. We've been waiting on the weather to cool down a little bit, but uh, if you're interested in that, Make a comment. Let us know what you think uh, if you would help support us if we had some tent services. So, uh, again, just keeping that in mind. We're praying over that right now. We'd love to do that. Um, but today I just want to jump into the Word. How many of you have ever struggled keeping your peace? Um, I have. You know, everything's going good. Uh, things are going our way. Things came to be fall in line. A few trials here and there, but, you know, we're good. But then all of a sudden something comes and, and wrecks our peace. Or maybe you're like someone I talked to not long ago who said, I want to keep what I feel in this church when I walk out these doors. Man, I would love to do that. Wouldn't it be great if the praise team could just come home with us singing in our ears? You know, all day long. Go through your work week. You know, you're you're sitting there on the you know on your line at work, or you're uh, you know in your office or wherever you work at. You, you know, you're you're turning that wrench, and all of a sudden, you know, you're getting upset, and you say, "Hey, hey, hey! Uh, how about a little father's house, guys?" And all of a sudden, the praise team's behind you, and they're singing along, and you're just trucking along. That's not reality. Um, the reality is we leave this place and, and uh, it's us and Jesus. It's us and Jesus and it's our thoughts. And we've been talking about that on Sundays. But I want to share with you just a few thoughts out of the Word today. So Matthew chapter 11, great chapter in the Bible. This is one of the most uh, unique chapters because it is the chapter where John the Baptist sends at the beginning, sends for Jesus, or, or he's in prison and he sends word to Jesus saying, hey, are you the one or should we look for another? John was at the end of his ministry, end of his life, and he has what we all have, doubts. Okay, hey, I just want to know, I'm about to die. Am I giving up my life for the right thing? I love Jesus' reply. Jesus doesn't get mad. He doesn't get defensive. He doesn't say, how dare you? Um, Jesus' reply is just simply, hey, John, let me tell you what's going on. What's going on is the lame are walking, the blind are seeing, those who can't speak are gaining back their speech, those who have leprosy are cleansed, and the gospel, the good news, is being preached to the poor, to those who need it the most. And that's what he offers to John. And John has no more questions after this. It seems like he's settled in his heart. Okay, that's what Jesus is doing. So flip, fast forward, and we're in the last part of of chapter 11 where, where we, let's pick up about verse 28. I want to read this to you. Jesus looks at his disciples because John was loved by everyone. A lot of Jesus' disciples followed John before they followed Jesus because what did John say at the baptism? Go follow him. That's the one. That's the one you need to be following, not me. And so a lot of John's disciples, a lot of Jesus' disciples were once John's disciples. And so again, uh, verse 28 says, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find, re find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There's three things that Jesus is teaching in this, and I just want to kind of point this out. And, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it the three steps to, to keeping our peace or keeping that feeling of God is real. And there's a lot more to that. I think personal worship, things of that nature. But I want you to, I want you to, I want to apply this today. Number one, Jesus says in these passages, he says, come to me. What does he say? Quit trying to find your answers in thinking it out or worrying it out or fretting over it. But come, come to me. Find a place alone with me. And he says, what? Um, in other words, quit looking for answers in anything else but me. And then the second thing that he teaches them is he says, then you've got to take my yoke. Oh, in, in other words, to take his yoke means I surrender mine. And a yoke was what they would put oxen in to plow the fields and plow the ground. And it was this wooden 
uh, or iron stru- uh, thing that would go around the neck. And he's saying, look, you have to first of all come, then you got to take. You got to give me your yoke, which is too heavy for you to bear, and you got to take mine on you. What is the yoke of God? The yoke of Christ is an understanding that my God has control of everything. And so he says, the second thing you do, the, the, the second thing you do is you got to take. You've got to take what I'm offering. God is not going to force himself on you. He's not going to force his peace on you. In other words, if I say, hey, here, you can have this cup of coffee, you, you have to reach and take it. I, I can't, you know, you, I can, and you might get a little upset, throw it on you and say, here's some coffee, wake up. No, uh, I, I'm offering it to you, but you've got to be willing to reach out and take it. Um, God says, I want to offer you peace. I want to pa- offer you hope. I'm offering you uh, all the things that you're needing right now. But first of all, you've got to surrender your life and you've got to take from me my peace and my love. Okay. And then the third thing he says is learn of me. Learning is one of the things that I think Christians battle with the most. We, we want to, learning is not just what happens in Sundays or online when we're doing this. Learning is something that God is trying to do every day. And he doesn't just teach through word. He teaches through, the, through nature, through our interaction with others. Some of the greatest Bible lessons I've ever learned is through a conversation with a child. Because of their innocence, they, they bring a perspective and a freshness and an untainted view of life. And I've learned some valuable lessons from kids before. Um, as a matter of fact, I was in camp one time and I was teaching about the Trinity and I was talking about my best illustration. I, even, I don't even remember because I gave up my illustration because this <coughs> excuse me, 12-year-old kid raises his hand and says, hey, Brother Phil, I think I understand the Trinity. And you're thinking, okay, 12 years old, let's see what understands the Trinity. There's adults that don't, don't understand Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden, this kid looks at me and he says, well, you know, it's kind of like this, Pastor Phil. You can have liquid water, and that's still water. You can have ice, but that's still water. And you can have steam, but that's still water. They're all three different things, but they're one thing altogether. They're water. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one great God. That was amazing. I learned that from a 12-year-old kid teaching a class in youth camp. We can learn things through our conversations about God. We can learn things through just our interactions with others. So he says, learn of me. In other words, there's going to be times in this life where your peace gets shaken. There's going to be times in this life where you get rocked. It's important to know where your peace comes from. It's important to know that my hope is found in Jesus. So what do we do? First of all, we got to come to him we gotta, we get, we gotta get tired of going everywhere else. We gotta come to him. Then we have to, to take from him. And then the last thing we have to do is learn. I hope and pray that that's what you will do today because I believe those are the three steps to having great peace. God bless you. We hope to see you not this Sunday in, hopefully online, but we hope to see you next, the, the, the following Sunday, September. And uh, we'll be back in the house to services. Um, I do want to say this. We've got some great things in mind for the fall. One thing we have in mind is having uh, some tent meetings. If you would be interested in being a part of a tent service or tent meetings, leave a comment for us. Let us know. We love you. God bless you. Have an awesome weekend.